Assalamu alaikum. Welcome to a new episode of the LDM show. On the show today, we have a former Christian who actually wanted to be a monk, but he became a Muslim instead. Assalamu alaikum. Wa alaikum salam wa rahmatullah. How are you? Alhamdulillah. You good? Alhamdulillah. All good. Alhamdulillah. You know, I have never ever met someone with the name Al Khidr Islam. And that's your name. Alhamdulillah. Al- yeah, alhamdulillah. alhamdulillah. It's good. But After I read the Surah Al Kaf, and I didn't know the name of a person. It's Al Khadr alayhi uh, salam. I was so intrigued by it. I said, if I find the name of him, then I'll take a name as a Muslim name. So then later on in Hadith, Alhamdulillah, I found the name. So. Wow, wow, wow. That's amazing. So, what we want to talk about on the show today is your journey to Islam. So, what sort of led you to, you know, think about changing religion? That's obviously a very hard thing to do for a Serb Orthodox. I never thought about changing religion, to be honest. Okay. I never, I never, I never had the perspective that I will be a Muslim, but there, there was something attractive about Islam. Um, a long time ago, before I was uh, a religious at all, when I was more of an atheist or agnostic. I looked in one article in Slovenia, that's where I was living, one of the ex yugoslavian countries. I, I looked in an article where it was, it was described that men can marry four wives. So as, as in a society where you are more manly, more women you have, I cut the article out and I put it on a gym where we were boxing <laughs> and wrestling. So I showed it to all, 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 all uh, brothers there and they, they were really amazed. We couldn't believe that you don't have to lie to a woman to have another woman. We couldn't understand how is this possible. Article was made by non-Muslims, but was really nicely put together. It was actually saying something in the context of, if woman wants to continue her study or whatsoever when she's pregnant, she can ask her husband herself if he will marry another one. So th- that was something that made me interested in Islam. Of okay. course, as a, as a young man, I was a young man those days. <laughs> I was really, really um, kind of impressed by that. But then later on, as I came to UK, I, I met some Muslims. I've seen the conduct of Muslims. First dawah that I'll, um, I can mention is, was a silent dawah. I was working as a security guard in uh, some wedding halls. So th- there, were, there were a lot of different weddings, uh, Hindus, uh, Sikhs, and Muslims as well. In one moment, I've seen a bunch of guys. I didn't know what Muslims do and how they look, what's the difference amongst, amongst uh, different communities. And I've seen a bunch of guys taking their shoes off. And I asked a manager, what are they doing? Should I tell them to put the shoes back on? He says, no, 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 they're Muslims. So what are they going to do? He said they're going to pray to God. So I was standing and watching. It was a silent hour. No one knew that I was impressed by it. What I noticed, that every time those guys who are taking their shoes off and, and prostrating, those guys were never drinking. I never had an issue at the end of the night to take them out. As I came in a hall, usually they, they hired this hall for four hours. When, when dr- drunken Sikhs or Hindus uh, were having parties, uh, then in those moments I was... Uh, usually taking them out for an hour or two you have wow. arguments because they had only one security it was a big thing sure. capacity up to a thousand so wow. one security for a thousand people of course i need to shut the music it was a bit difficult but anyway with muslims as i came in it's already empty so once i watched i see a little bit of, of of drums a little bit of food they clean everything and they're gone so i started respecting them so highly wow. that I actually when i was invited in a mosque first time Due to respect of a culture, I went. Wow. But this was what, 2002. Wow. And 2005, something happened. I started considering the existence of God. Took a Bible, as, as that's the religion of my father's. Took a Bible, read a Bible, was really impressed. Yeah, yeah there are things that they leave dark spots uh, uh, in your heart, especially when you read stories of the prophets that you would not agree with. Sure. Like, I, I do remember a story of... Um, Lot. Uh, Lot Islam, yeah, when, mm. when he's supposed to be fornicating with his daughters and so yeah. on. But, but still you kind of skip, you, you try to ignore what you're reading because it is impressive. One thing led to another, I became very religious. Went to monastery, wanted to become a monk. Wow. It took me three to six months to get out of it. In, in, and the main reason was when I was thinking, I was asked, don't think you're here to worship and obey. I worship who? I never believe Jesus is, is God himself. Even I pray to him in some weird way. May Allah forgive me. Alhamdulillah. Now, now I'm on Tawheed. But in th- those days, in some weird way, it made sense. You, you live in some kind of a bubble. Because Christians themselves, when you go in a higher levels of, of Christianity, they have this concept that he is a God and he is a man and he is yep. a prophet. 
So any of these you accept, you're going to kind of fit yourself in. As many Christians, sure. ourselves, we know who, who give dawah, they don't believe in certain divine attributes of Islam. They've got the uncertainty. So one thing led to another, went out to a monastery. I was challenging too many questions. Went out to a monastery, pick up a Quran, and I still remember the day I was surprised um, due to me trying to buy a book. They didn't want to accept money for it. It was like pushing them 20 or 50 euros or whatever it was. It was first religious book, first holy scripture that I got for free. Now I understand, alhamdulillah, brothers, they wanted to have some blessings out of it. I sat in a car, my brother was sitting next to me, and I opened and I read translation of Al Fatiha. And of course, I couldn't read the whole book in, in one go. So I read a last surah. I want to see how the book ends. I read the last surah, Nas. And I remember as I was reading translation, my brother himself, he said, uh, I want to have that book. You're going to borrow it to me. I said, no way, you get your own <laughs> copy. Eh? <laughs> They're giving it for free. Alhamdulillah, he got the copy as well. May, may Allah guide him. Um, uh, he's still still kind of on, on the way of, inshallah, inshallah researching. Inshallah. But yes, one, one thing led to another. 2007 in UK accepted Islam. There, there's wow. many events in the meantime. So I'm not going to prolong the story. Maybe some other time, inshallah. Sure. Sure, that's, I mean, it's a very good way of summarizing your story. And what I want to sort of end with is why yourself as a relatively new Muslim, why it's important for Muslims to be involved in Dawah? Now I'm going to speak on the basis as a human, not as a Muslim. As a human being, as a decent human being, if you know that there is good in something for someone, would you not want to share it? Of course. And, and that's the reason. If you know there is a good at the end of the story, a little bit of struggle, a little bit of waking up in the morning, a little bit of fasting, and that's it. What does Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala ask from us? Hardly anything. As much as He is giving us. Hardly anything. Yeah, wow. Exactly. So, so on the basis of human being, we can forget the, uh, the, the Quran and Sunnah. There is so much telling us that this obligation and so on and so on. Even if you forget that aside, for someone who, who, who is not educated, only on the basis, does it does good to you? You expect Jannah? So why, why are you selfish? Are we like Jews? Who say <laughs> Jannah is only for us? Now we want everyone who, who is close to us to share this with us, inshallah. Sure. I would like to give a small advice to duas, to, to brothers who give da'wah with us. We, we, we see this, it's all the time happening. We give da'wah and someone may accept Islam and next day they don't even give, want to give us salam. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the one who guides. For us is to pass the message. Now, for some of them, we are only warning them. Wow. Even they give shahada, don't despair if you don't see them in a masjid. Maybe Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala just wants to punish him. Maybe within three, four, five years you're going to see him a sheikh with a beard coming from Medina. Allah wallam. But don't despair. Just sure. keep on pushing, inshallah. Excellent. Jazakallah khair for all of that explanation on why you became Muslim and why that was important. Thank you so much for coming on the show. Wa inshallah, we're going to see you again. Inshallah. Wa alaikum salam wa rahmatullah. Ah.